Okay, so here you've got a moment from Jacob Lacey, and, and we're just going to run this whole final four plays here for Texas offensively, well, of, of their second-to-last possession. Um, Lacey just does an outstanding job getting around and getting into this A-gap here. Uh, just, you know, OU kind of slants down. You can see McCullough come down and fill that gap. Uh, like I said, Lacey will circle around this way. And he just does a great job kind of using that pivot point and just keep rotating, rotating until he can get around DJ Campbell and make the sack. We all know how big that play ended up becoming, uh, really pushing Sark to a point. He clearly, he didn't like the, the risk reward. It wasn't worth it for him to not kick the field goal. Um, so just nice play. They'll show it from the end zone here. Like I said, this will be a longer one because we're going to do a few plays here. Yeah, you'll see him come down. So just nice all-around play. And should be noted, Peyton Bowen was in on that one because this is right after Billy Bowman went off after the big collision with, um, I believe it was Xavier Worthy. We'll mute that. You got, I know, sometimes guys don't like hearing that. Uh, okay, so um, here, I think this is the quick pass out in the flat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, worthy, not again, there, there's Peyton Bowen. Not a great tackle. It's not the way you draw it up, but you got the guy to the ground. And that's, that's if I've seen anything from Peyton Bowen, he, he does a good job putting a guy down and just making sure he's, he's going to be no longer a threat. So nice play there. Again, you're keeping third and long. You're forcing Texas into a tough situation. Now, here's what I don't I, – and I want to say, I thought Oklahoma's um, uh, play usage all day was really good. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, clock management was really good. We've talked about it, how much cleaner it's been this year. There seems to be – Whatever the problems were last year, seemed like they've been worked out. I thought OU was great in the middle eight against Iowa State. I thought they were great again against Texas. Um, and really thought they managed the last minute or so really well in this one. The thing I don't like, and it ended up actually working out in OU's favor because they got down the field so quickly uh, on their final drive. But, okay, so, all right, timeout's called. It's 127. I believe that's when the clock actually stops. Let's, yeah, okay, so the clock stops at 127. The play before, Worthy is down, you lost 30 seconds. That, I again, if you don't get down the field that quickly, that 30 seconds could have been vitally useful. And I, I'd love to say, oh, you knew the four plays, that's pretty pie in the sky. Um, so again, I think it's been really good. I think this was a misstep. And they're, they're going to happen sometimes. I'm not saying anybody's ever going to be perfect on these things. But I don't really understand. Because I know some people said, oh, well, substitution problems. The umpire stopping the play. There's 17 seconds left. Like, oh, you clearly had time to do this. Now, I guess you could make the argument, and I'm, I'm literally just thinking of this on the fly, that Oklahoma was having to waste so much time with their substitution, they decided they need to stop the, the the play. But again, you knew you were going to sub pretty quickly. I mean, Texas Texas is set. So clearly they had subbed on whoever they were subbing, and it's hard to see because we're not getting to see the field. But clearly Texas had whoever they were putting into the game on the field already, and you could have called a timeout before now if that was going to be your concern. So I – Again, I think it's just a misstep. You got to own that and, you know, go forward. So here we go. We'll go third down here. And the timeout. The timeout that I spent all the time talking about and then completely forgot about and said we're going to watch third down. I'm, uh, there's a reason this is the Monday morning idiot. So. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, you've got PJ and Kelly boxed down here. Jonah and R. Mason Thomas. Um, not to toot my own horn. These are the guys I said I wanted to see in pass rushing situations. I'm a little shocked that this isn't Grayson Halton, 
but I think something must have been wrong because Grayson Halton played almost no snaps in this game. Um, so here we go. You can hear my dog drinking water. What perfect timing for near silence. Look at PJ just about make that play. Right there off the corner. That's impressive. All right, so... Canick drops off and pass, comes up, helps make the stop and run. So, again, without that Jacob Lacey sack, that's probably a first down run for Texas. Now, you know, we, we can get into all the, well, then, you know, the cause would have been different and OU's call would have been different in that scenario. We, we, we can go down the list. Um, but, obviously, fourth and four probably doesn't happen without that sack. That's just a huge, huge play in the game. Hey. Look, it's everybody's favorite. Arch Manning's in the house. What do you know? All right. Um, so, anyway, Dylan Gabriel starting to get ready. Doesn't even realize he's about to become an Oklahoma legend. That's, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, seems like a pretty good moment there. Um, anyway, so, I mean, I, I guess we'll watch him. No, here they try to draw him off sides. Oklahoma reads it pretty well. Not, I don't think Texas is going to be super proud of the sales effort they put in here. Uh, you got the guy in motion. Whittington goes. I mean, it, it just, that, that, that felt very half-hearted in the attempt there. So, anyway, okay, so... Uh, Bert Auburn's about to hit a field goal. We don't have to watch that. Texas will be up 30-27 the next time I talk to you. 